Pulls up the three. Boom! Knocks it down. Curry from the corner at three. Puts it in. For overtime. Makes it. Garrett. Welcome to the MVP cast from me, Mark Woods. My guest is back in the British Basketball League this season after a couple of years away, taking over a club that was a little bit fractured behind the scenes last term. Now, piecing it back together, hoping for somewhat greater stability this year. The new head coach of Worcester Wills, Matt Newby, joins us. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Oh, thanks very much for having me on the podcast. I mean, it's been a couple of years now. Is, is it... What's the reinvigoration factor about coming into a you know a new club, new team, new situation? I think well, I mean the worst opportunity came up, um, and obviously uh, express, expressed my interest and uh, and took the interview. And I think it was just um, the way the management uh, you know put the proposal forward. It, it was essentially a, a fresh start, a, a new opportunity, and you know Worcester's got a. Uh, a strong pedigree over the over its time in the BBL, and I think uh, I'd like to help um, elevate the uh, program again. Coming from out of the experience of Leeds Force, where you know, it was a long, slow build-up, then moving into the BBL, and you had you know that good season when when Craven Newton was there, and you making the playoffs, but it, you know it was it it wasn't title challenges there. It, 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 did, is it nice to come in somewhere where I guess? from past experience not last season but before that there was a level of expectation of doing well over a season yeah i think i think it, it, it you know pressure is a privilege isn't it if you're given an opportunity like this you've got to take it um for me um the lead, lead thing was definitely a, a project of uh passion and um we put our all into that and 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 it went as far as it, it, it could go you know and uh here um, I think there's a similar similar heritage. You know, Mick Donovan has driven the program since its inception. Um, the university's behind it. Uh, there's a there's a very strong and passionate fan base um, in Worcester, and I, and uh, I, you know I like that. And um, I think uh, moving forward, uh, it, it's it's a good thing to have that pressure there. Does it feel like uh, have you have you sort of I guess, noticed that early because even last season, the one thing that always struck me about Worcester, I mean, the, the, the team wasn't doing well. There was a lot of turmoil, but fans came week after week after week to keep supporting the team. And then you know, how, much, how much does it help to go to a place where people do seem to care? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that that, that runs throughout the whole organisation. The You know, the one thing I've learned coming here is, there's uh, a lot of people that are fully vested in 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 the in the project and the program, um, and you know the 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 legacy that it's left over the over the past few years. And and, and when you walk in the gym, um, there is a there is a high expectancy from the fan, but the genuine people um, with a genuine passion for the sport and uh, a genuine love of the game, and and they're fully vested in the players, the coach, and and the identity of the club. When you had those couple of years out, I mean, obviously you were still involved with the City of Leeds Foundation and the Academy and, and, and the university programme, I guess, there as well. But was there was there anything you did in that period of time to, I guess, prepare yourself better for the challenge of once again, at some point, coming back and being a head coach in a professional level? Uh, I think, I mean, I've just kept, I've just kept my um, professional development going. You know, I, I'd, I'd spent a, uh, a lot of time with the Leeds program, um, dedicated to multiple tiers tiers of the program, um, uh, which was often um, uh, tiring and a bit stressful at times. But but it gave me the opportunity to access different coaches at different levels. Um, you you know can always ask, ask a question of yourself um, uh, with the people that you're working with, and also it gave me the opportunity to kind of stretch my legs and. Um, Go, go abroad. I spent uh, a little bit of time in in Serbia with the with a partnership that the Leeds program have with uh, Red Star Belgrade, and it, it was just an opportunity to go and learn more. Um, you know, test your credentials essentially, and 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 challenge your your own beliefs and philosophies. You know, what do you find out when you go to somewhere like Red Star with the pedigree that they've got, the development system that they've they've had for years and years and years? How do you kind of go in there and consciously? try to soak something up 
Well, I think it's you know you've got you've got to put yourself in a in a position to learn. Um, I've I've always been a big believer in I, I guess the way I grew up was going to try and find the best resources or sources for information and and, and coaching. I'd spent a lot of time in my early sort of development going out to the US and and, and when. I kind of looked east. Serbia is obviously a natural one. They they consistently produce high level uh, players, high level coaches. You know the, the European leagues are littered with um, uh, <laughs> strong influence from not just Serbia but the Balkan region. And and I just wanted to to learn. So you know when you've got access to witness uh, the youth team coaches work or the senior coaches work, you just make sure you. Um, you access it and, and and it's about probably interrogating your own qualities your your own standards your own philosophy and also capturing um what makes them successful what if if anything were you able to pick from what you saw there that you thought i can realistically with the resources i've got the system we've got that i can bring back and put that into my system and make it better well, I, I think you know the the one thing there is is uh, the volume and intensity of practice, the quality of teaching, um, the fact that they do challenge one another as coaches, uh, that the fraternity is strong by virtue of competition, not just on the court, but in terms of uh, the professional development of of the coaches and and those around the sport and. I mean, you've witnessed it yourself when you've you've been away to Europe and and, and around the world. You know, they the the, the best environments you, you're challenged and you're challenging someone else or being challenged by uh, by others. So your players can expect to run much harder in practice this season than they would have done at Leeds. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, I, I think you know it's all right being a taskmaster, and I, I think the the, the volume the volume of practice and the intensity of practice has to be married with a a quality of teaching and 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 a, a broader comprehension of the game you know how much with the team that you've got do you expect to spend time teaching this season as opposed to actually sort of coaching and getting ready for games i mean do you, do you sort of sense early on what that sort of pendulum will feel like over the course of a season I think you probably touched on it i think it's different season to season um you, you obviously recruit a team with a with an idea and with a with uh hopefully uh you go after players that are gonna f uh, fit your philosophy or or your um identity and and ultimately you've got to um identify whether or not you've you've been on the money or you you've got to be a bit more fluid in in your in your coaching and your teaching to to get the best outcomes and results you know i think <clears throat> any coach in the league will tell you, you you know the players walk through the door on the first day and um you can be pleasantly surprised or you might you might question a couple of uh, decisions that you made but you've got to make it work um, i'm i'm really happy with with the recruitment that we've um done and i think uh you know looking at it from having a blank canvas uh i think we'll be competitive and uh i hope to forge a new identity for the program What's your scouting process or preparation process, if you could talk us through it? Because obviously a lot of coaches will watch you know, as much game tape, which will be much simpler this season because almost every game is on YouTube. A lot of coaches use the Synergy stat system, which yeah. for those who don't know, it gives you lots of clips of games, lots of different breakdowns of, of players. What's what's your sort of process of preparing for that next opponent or sets of opponents? Well, I think the the, the synergy the synergy is a massive advantage to to the coaches. You you need the time, obviously, to to um, get the highest returns out of it. But ultimately, what what we will do in terms of uh, breaking down our next opponent uh, opponents, it would be to um, look at the individual profile of the team. So the strengths and weaknesses, tendencies of of the individuals. Look at the um, the systems that they employ offensively and defensively and look at how to uh, approach that you know if, if they defend pick and rolls a certain way or they have a specific scheme defensively that that we need to adjust to then that would be a, a big emphasis and then offensively how they um, look to exploit other teams what are their tendencies as a five-man unit you know how 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 successful are they 
in certain situations, look at how maybe other teams have obviously played uh, played them and where other teams have had success defending them and obviously attacking them because you you can learn learn a lot from the respective matchups in the league and, and, and get a, a better game plan by doing so. Do you, do you spend a lot of time watching game film? I mean, is that, is that as big a thing or does it tend to be for you a lot more concentrated on very specific things that you need? I mean, <laughs> at different times in the season, you know, <laughs> You'll 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 have a lot more time to um, break things down. Uh, other times, you know, when those games come really really frequently, you might be looking to try and fix um, a couple of smaller issues uh, to make sure that you're you're ready for the next one. You know, there, there'll be times in the season where you'll catch probably four games in eight to ten days, just because by virtue of of the way the schedule's put together. So sometimes you've got to just, like you say, focus on, on, on certain things that are going to benefit you in the short term. But over time, what you should be looking to do is, hold, I, th- I believe, holding holding your team to account uh, with regards to how we're performing defensively and offensively, showing them the mistakes and uh, ideally uh, fixing the problems on the floor, uh, having done that. I mean, you're a coach educator, have been as well as a, as a coach. And how... How does that evolution now change? Because obviously there's the X and O side, there's the man or woman management side of of coaching, but how, how do you integrate the technological side of coaching, which has become such a a big part of, of, of the strategic makeup of, of that role? I mean, anyone that knows me, I, I, I need a bit of help sometimes with the technology <laughs> side of things. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, but I mean, what... With with the with the trends that have have come in over the prob, you know probably the last five years certainly you you've got a lot of access to, um, well you've got access to a lot of information and I think the the key is is making it real to the to the player you know you 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 can you can capture a lot of statistical evidence you can capture a lot of film you know you could spend hours and hours uh, on one individual or or several phases of play if you wanted to you you know you can go into that much depth i think it's it's making it relevant to your players making it relevant to the team and um presenting them with 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 solutions based on that information um and being able to articulate it because there's a lot of people that are very very good with the technology but can't necessarily translate it for the the player or or for the team and I think it's yeah, well. I see. I'm seeing that it's going to be very important down the line with all these trends to be able to uh, pick pick from from the respective um, resources and 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 be able to present it in a way that the team can take it and run with it. Your your roster that you've built this season, obviously very very new, and that's an you know, incredible sort of challenge in itself to bring those new guys together. But you, you pick a couple of players like Kofi Josephs coming in, who's you know bounced over the place as a different opportunities. How do you take someone like him and and not to say build a team around him, but build a team that can get the best out of him? Well, ultimately, Kofi has a a very good offensive skill set. I think that's that's well documented. Um, for me, the attraction was that he's he's a domestic guy. He's got a you know a, a credible resume, and uh, you know it's not you're right. It's not about building a system around one individual, but ma- making it making it an opportunity where he can be successful. That's a, that's a build over over time. It's you know we've got nine to ten new players um, in 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 the roster. We've got to find out about their personalities, their identities, and, and make sure they mesh and and also help them understand one another's skill sets. And then for me, it's my responsibility to put a tactical scheme on the floor that, that, that enhances their strengths and, you know, uh, de- develops, well, strengthens, the, strengthen, strengthens them in other areas, you know, in, in, in the areas that they need to develop. You've got someone like Cordis Edwards, comes in went to southern mississippi I mean, when you're looking at guys like that who you know, nice resumes coming out of college we never know quite how they translate into the professional ranks but what's the process that a club like worcester goes about to get someone like him 
Well, I mean, I, like I say, the, ma the management were very, very good in terms of um, the. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to to go out and recruit um, a team uh, without too many too many influences. You know, it, it's, it's been a, it's been a good opportunity for me, and the way I spend my time is not not in no no different to probably the other coaches in the league. It's it's a lot of a lot of phone calls. It's a it's a a lot of what uh, a lot of film. It's it's a lot of referencing the players and and trying to understand well as best you can how it might translate. Um, you know, someone like Cortez Edwards, he's you know averaged thirteen six four and two in a in a very very strong conference in the NCAA. You know, he he, he has the I guess the DNA to be suitable in our league which is quite up tempo um you know it's an athletic uh, league in in a lot of ways and and one that's one, one where the game's played at pace and I think he he suited that so it it, it was a natural choice amongst a number of resumes to 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 hard target him but it's interesting you talk about the freedom to recruit I mean that's not something that head coaches in Worcester have always had was that was that a, one of the appeals to you maybe that might not have been there before that there is some latitude now it seems for the head coach to put his team on the floor rather than putting someone else's team on the floor i mean i can't i can't really speak about other tenures you know um i i don't i don't know what's gone by in the past or, or how things have been managed all i know is that the management have been really really supportive and i think it, it always gives you um you know uh, a positive mindset when somebody entrusts you with those responsibilities um and i have to say that the the management were very very good and and they said look you need to you need to go out and and find what you want on the floor and and i've been able to do that let's just take a pause for one moment to tell you all about the british basketball all-stars championship which returns on sunday october the 13th the venue the copper box arena in london with eight of the BBL's very best teams doing battle in this fantastic tournament, which will be live on Sky Sports. It features 12-minute games, an all-star five-point line, and that golden buzzer power play. And the British Basketball All-Stars Championship promises to be a non-stop afternoon of fast-paced hoops action. Now, the tournament, again, showcasing the very best of British basketball talent, Surrey Scorchers, out to defend at the title they won 12 months ago. You really want to be there. You can get your tickets now. They're on sale with all the information available at allstarsbasketball.co.uk. Matt Newby is our guest. Matt, you've, you've had a quite, uh, I wouldn't say broad coaching journey. You've coached at every single level possibly imaginable <laughs> since you started out this year under 16, you're college programs professional programs and the, the full shebang but what made you want to be a coach um honestly <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a very good question um i i had always been heavily involved in sport at high school and uh, in and in in fe and ultimately i love basketball um but i was conscious that my my level of play wasn't perhaps where it where it where it could be to to get a return of it and return from it in the future so um i i made some choices in terms of education to go to go down the sports studies coaching route and and really enjoyed it i like i love being uh, i loved working in the community i loved working with teams um seeing uh, young people succeed was kind of a, a big deal to me and and sports an excellent vehicle for that so that's kind of how it got started and then um the right things happened at the right time on the most part and and uh, i was fortunate enough to take uh take a, a nice journey in terms of junior national league coaching and then senior coaching what was the point where you because obviously lots of people do under 16 coaching and it's something you do on a thursday night or a you know saturday afternoon but what was the point when you sort of thought yeah, I, I I can I can make a career of this, and I want to make a career of this. I mean, it's not difficult. I like say you need you need you need to make make your own look and have a have a little bit of look at, on 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 top of that. I think um, I came out of university with a coaching degree, but that doesn't guarantee you a job in this mm -hmm. country. You know, you, you know you know what I mean. So normally normally the route takes 
uh, several paths you know it might be uh, you get into community development and then you can forge links with 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 a program and and basically i i come back to leeds um started working heavily in the community and 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 with schools schools in the area and some some jobs came up uh, that that kind of led 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 me down down the path you know i, I was fortunate enough that um a partnership was uh, being forged between one of the SSPs in Leeds and a, and uh, Leeds Carnegie University, and I was I applied for the role, and then it kind of went from there. It gave me the opportunity to go into senior coaching, while still maintaining a, a strong influence on what was happening in the community, and then and then the program built from there. How fun was it to see that though grow so organically, especially when you're eventually able to put the professional team on top of it? And because emotionally, that must have been quite special to have been able to shape it in the way that you did yeah it was yeah you know when, whenever you invest in something you 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 hope to get return on it right and ultimately we from 2006 till 2014 we 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 traveled up the ranks there'd been some really significant successes and and then the entry to the bbl um gave us kind of the i guess the cherry on the cake if you want to use that analogy and and it, it was great we we you know we rolled the ball out against uh programs and teams that i'd you know seen in my youth and it, that was kind of a big deal how tough is that though on the flip side because you're effectively a co-owner of the, of the club you're effectively running it as a director of basketball and you're the head coach and how how tough was or was that more tough than you could have imagined to kind of have a professional team on top of everything else that you were doing because i remember at the time talking to you a few times and you were like i just my life is crammed and there is not a spare second here available i am i mean yeah that's the flip side of it isn't it i think you know um sometimes you can you can uh put yourself in the position where you were doing too much but it was exciting at the time and you know there was still some steps to make to 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 drive to continue to drive it forward, and therefore, at the time, I believe that that was worth it. You know, <laughs> after ten years of it, though, how much was it a wrench when that journey ended at, at the force? Um, tough, yeah. Uh, you know, these things, these things, you know, come to test you. Unfortunately. Um, uh, there was a chain of events that, that that led me to be no longer at the helm and no longer involved, and that was tough. And ultimately, uh, uh, I had to go in a different direction. Uh, it allowed me to refocus uh, my energies on some other aspects of, of of the program and and the community in Leeds, and uh, it gave me an opportunity to evaluate um, the what next. And your family got you back a little bit as well, though. That was the flip yeah. side. Yeah. Well, no, I've got you know, I've got I've got obviously two girls, and my partner Jess is incredibly supportive. But um, they, they they were brilliant. You know, they they my both my girls uh, started playing actually in that time, so that that was that was uh, very cool. And uh, you're right, I got to go out for dinner a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when you saw what happened with Leeds, I mean, you had that sort of terrible final year where you know the club was was bought over and it. It really ran into the ground, and you know, and that's probably being kind of it. Was it? Was there part of you that was felt a bit pained at seeing things end the way that it did? No, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that for not just from a, on a personal level, but from a you know from a basketball landscape point of view. Um, however, it, however it played out, I wasn't happy. You know, no, nobody, no, nobody can take joy in seeing uh, a team fold and. You know the impact of that. I think, unfortunately, will still be um, there for 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 a, for a little while. I mean, still having such close ties to Leeds and basketball there. I mean, if you, I mean, it's such a big city. You want a professional team in in, in that city. If 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 you if you were doing that again, or someone else was coming back in, what do you think is the one thing that would need to change? That's a big question. <laughs> That's a really big question. Um, I think you know the basketball landscape in 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 the countries in in shift constantly at the moment. If somebody was going to in any city, you know, you could say Liverpool, you could say 
you could say Leeds or you could, you could pick a pick another uh, major city. I think you've got to be um, very very mindful of the investment it requires, what what you need underpinning it, and the uh, human resource that you require to make it function both on on and off the floor. You know, there's there's a couple of cities I think in the, in in the country that could could sustain a, a a new basketball franchise, but you've got to have the right people at the right time um, and the and, and the right infrastructure and the you know the programs that have have survived the the big highs and the big lows in the BBL like like the the Newcastles and the Leicesters they've they've got that right you know they've they've got the um, on court and the off court they're down really really well. We always talked about trying to get that arena built in Leeds for the for the team. I mean, it, was that? Do you think that would be a reasonable proposition in the future, or was it something that you just thought I don't think we could pull this off? Um, I mean, at the, at the time, uh, you know, there was there was a couple of people involved, and there was there was some very strong conversations going on uh, going on with with um, important uh, decision makers within within the city. So it was, I think, it was always an aspiration to do so. I think it's still an aspiration of the city to have a sporting venue. Whether or not that's something that would um, host a, a franchise I'm, I'm uncertain but I think I think ultimately the the uh, way that other programs in the country have approached it they've once they've got their own venue they're 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 in a lot better shape and they have a home for their for their respective club let's flip this around to something else you do you've been very involved in the three on three basketball through sort of basketball england's program and for a lot of people, that's been something that's been very neglected. I mean, there was an Olympic place that was sort of up for grabs that no one really seemed to do anything about. And, you know, the Commonwealth Games in a few years' time in Birmingham will have three on three. But it's an aspect of basketball that hasn't seen a lot of resources and attention given to. What From being involved in it, what's, what's the potential and what do you think could be done to, to kind of make this country a three on three country? Well, I mean, the the three on three that I was involved in was the, was was actually the first kind of world um, world championship. I think it, they they framed it as in Greece, and from there it's just snowballed. You know, um, I think the format's good. It's exciting. I think originally they kind of looked at how uh, volleyball had uh, reinvented itself with the with the with the two on two uh, aspect, and and it works for basketball as well. It's up tempo. It's fast. Um, it's something that be, can be replicated on any court. And I, I don't. I can't answer any questions on on why maybe we haven't jumped on um, this format because it, I think it would work for the UK. Uh, but obviously, there's there's a lot for, for the governing body to attend to. There's a lot for GB basketball to attend to. But I think it could be a format where where we could get some. Um, I don't. I don't want to say cheap wins, but you know, easy wins because you know it lends itself to smaller countries. You know, if you put the right profile of team together, you can you you can be very very successful. The the French have invested in it heavily. Um, I know I know a few people within the with the within the governing body there, and that they they invested heavily uh, in it from an early from an early start, and they've they've been very successful across all categories and i think it's it's a way of um promoting the sport in a new way uh, the the european tour the world tour you've seen uh, a different type of player maybe seeing success on the floor uh, as well so it, it's it's exciting times for it I, I i hope there's an opportunity when when i guess the governing body and gb basketball have uh, managed to manage other aspects of, of 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 the national national team's profile to 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 look at it and potentially invest in it certainly with the with the uh, with the uh, commonwealth's coming around as well I mean, from what you've seen of you know, from what other countries and world champs etc i mean do you think that as you talk about it it's a very it's a different kind of profile of player that you would recruit for a three on team but do you see that this country has that kind of player and the quality of player that we could succeed 
I think so. But I mean, they, they need to adjust the format. I think if you look at how the again how the French are, have, have selected, they, they're not. It's not all the same players that are, are rolling out in national teams. They, you know, I think you need a blend of uh, athleticism and strength. But you you see you see a. a a very sharp basketball IQ. It's you know it's it's, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting format that that lends itself to um, you know a, a, cer- a certain type of player in a sense and 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 it's exciting. So pick pick a three on three dream three on three team in the BBL. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I could do that <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm either I'm either going to put no, noses out of joint. Or, <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, save that one for another day. Uh, oh, we'll, I think we'll come back but, to that later in the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last last couple of things. I mean, obviously, your role at Worcester, um, head coach of Wolves, but also you've got a role within the university and the basketball pathway there. What, what in practical terms will that involve? Well, um, my my understanding is that uh, that I've I've come in obviously to um, direct and manage the the BBL program in the first instance but I think uh, again the the management have been very very uh, good in terms of uh, affording me the opportunity to uh, begin to work with the the staff that they have here in in, in the books program and the, and the staff that they have in in the broader basketball community here to to kind of forge um, a little bit of a new look uh, you know Worcester was a perennial um, Con- well, title holder in 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 the books. You know, I, we when I was at Leeds, we matched up with them uh, every every year, and I think uh, there's very much a, pa- a desire and a passion to to return to compete with the the guys that are at the top at the moment. And you know, I think one of my responsibilities will be helping the the coaching staff um, of the respective books programs um, continue to move forward um, on top of the great work that they've done. And given all that, do you, will you get any time off this season? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope so. But you know what? It, it, it's it's a great opportunity um, in a, in a great town and with a with a great basketball community. And you know, I, I'm I'm really thankful for the opportunity that um, Mick Donovan and the management have given me. And last weekend, I should say the way at Bristol Flowers Cup local derby i mean it is but it'd be nice to sort of feel that back in that passionate sort of environment again where you know early in the season okay it's cup and it's group stages etc but you know you're you, you kind of have that little free on that that maybe you didn't have for the last couple of years yeah I th- I, it's exciting i mean andreas builds great teams and and you know we we've already matched up with them in pre-season um and it was a it was a one-point game at the end and I think uh, both of us were still getting to 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 know our, our teams and 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 the teams getting to know themselves. Although he's returned a, a nice core um, at, at the Flyers, I think uh, they're athletic, they're strong, very very physical, defend very very well. Um, and you know, Andreas has has got a nice blueprint in terms of his offensive scheme. So I, I think I think it'd be a great matchup and. Uh, uh, an exciting test uh, for us, you know, and like you say, it's a local rivalry, so uh, so the fans will be into it as well. You'll be hoping to throw them to the wolves, as they say. Well, it's um, it's really great to see you back in the BBL this season. It's been too long. Um, best of luck for this campaign, Matt, and thank you for for coming on and joining us. Thank you very much, Mark. That's it for this edition of the MVP Cast. You can subscribe via your favourite podcast provider or get all the episodes via MVP247.com. We'll have another one coming very soon. But for now, from me, Mark Woods, it's goodbye. Goodbye.